for some of you youngsters, <laughs> making it to 50 can feel simultaneously like a victory and a defeat. On the one hand, you've been alive for half a freaking century. You're old enough to be filled with wisdom and life experience. That's what we call it, but it's really beer and tequila. <laughs> but not so old that you feel like an antique. Right. Uh, maybe I disagree with that. At the same time, there are days when you feel your age, like today. Uh, maybe not physically, but at least culturally, the world doesn't seem to revolve around you like it once did back in those younger days. Yeah, everything from your fashion choices to your home decor options now feel a little bit more limited. You can't get away with anything you want anymore because a 50-year-old is held to a little higher standard. And it's not a bad thing, actually. Now, more than ever, the world expects you to be an adult. Here are 50 things that a guy over 50 should think about retiring from his life. Okay, if number one, if you have one of these, I got one question for you. Why? Yeah. A hoverboard. Yeah. If you're over 50, you're probably bewitched by that Back to the Future sequel where Michael J. Fox evades capture on a futuristic hoverboard. Well, get over it, man. Modern hoverboards are dangerous and stupid, and you look like a buffoon while trying to balance on one. Yeah. Was I strong enough on that? Uh, yeah, and broken hips ain't no joke. No. Yeah. Uh, next up, a futon. Ronnie, on the way on over to your house this morning, I noticed that you have a store that sells futons and beanbags. <laughs> oh, that's right on Seriously, Greenback. Seriously, yeah. yeah. That's right on Greenback uh, Who's there. buying those, Ron? <laughs> and the parking lot is always full. Uh, so I think they're selling something else there on the oh, side. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cannabis. Yeah. Uh, so futon, if you haven't reached the point in your career where you can afford both a bed and a couch, you probably have bigger problems than whether you should consider a futon an acceptable choice of furniture. But consider this your carry, canary in a coal mine. Owning a futon after 50 is a huge warning sign that you may have made some miscalculations in your life path. Somewhere along the lines, perhaps. Yeah. Up next on the 50 things that you shouldn't, or we're not going to get to 50, on the things that you shouldn't own over 50, a treadmill. Here's why. <laughs> it's the piece of gym equipment that everybody hates, and with good reason. Buying one and putting it in your home is just showing off, and not in a good way. It's telling the world, I care enough about my health to buy an expensive piece of exercise equipment I'm just going to hang clothes on and probably never use. If you're over 50, you really don't need a treadmill. No. Okay. No. Oh, this next one, short and sweet, but it's true. Underwear with a funky design or portrait of your favorite personal or real person. Who so, does that? So Batman. Batman or Deadpool. Superman. I know a guy that would put have he's probably wearing Deadpool underwear right now. Oh, I know who you're talking about yeah, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, your underwear has one job, and that one job, you had one job underwear, uh, <laughs> is not to announce to the world or whoever happens to see your underwear how much you love Spider-Man, Deadpool, Batman, Superman, uh, rabbits, uh, carrots, whatever is on your underwear. Bugs Bunny. Yeah. All right. Next up, things you shouldn't own: a mini fridge. What? <laughs> I have a full-size fridge in my garage. Well, it's not a mini fridge. But it can't be because all the beer in it. <laughs> We're sure more than a few will quibble about this one, but a fully grown adult male with a mini fridge is like a grown-up mowing the lawn with one of those little plastic toy mowers. <laughs> well, you, wait. If it spits out bubbles, that's cool, though. It is cool. I have I like, one of those. I like those. You can and should upgrade to a full-size refrigerator. Thank you. Thank you. Please, everyone, sit That's down. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If the only food you need can be stored inside in a mini fridge, then maybe it's time to spend more money at grocery stores and less at the pantry aisle at your local <laughs> gas station. Uh, next up, a frat sweatshirt. Oh, boy, they are. That's a little bit douchey. <laughs> so, Tell it like it is. <laughs> Preach on, Ron. There's nothing intrinsically wrong about being a fraternity in college, but... There is something a little weird about a 50-year-old still celebrating his frat experience three decades after the fact. At this point, hopefully you've made another group of friends that don't have so many secret handshakes and kegger parties. Yeah, it's time. 
Okay. And toga parties. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Next up, mustache wax. Ronnie, I'm glad I got this one. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed because we're not really that way. But I've been growing my mustache extremely long lately. And it's kind of out of control. So I asked my wife to get some mustache wax for me. Oh. And it made the list here of things you shouldn't have when you're over 50. Mustache wax. Oh, boy, where to begin? You want to grow a mustache after 50? Too late. That's fine. Even commendable. Facial hair is every man's right, damn it. Absolutely. But shaving or having Salvador Dali delusions at your age <laughs> uh, is not helping your credibility much as an adult. No. Just let your stash do what it wants to do. Don't try to manipulate it into clever shapes. That's not my goal at all. I just want it to stay in place for like five minutes so I don't look like, well, I can't even say that word. <laughs> <laughs> well, on a side note, okay, good. So after I retired, I had to wait six months before I could go back and and work again. Uh -huh. And I grew. Oh, I remember that. I, I had a pretty sweet goatee. ass biker goatee going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was getting long enough, and my goal was to be able to put a bead in it, as per Captain Lou Albano. I know a guy like that that I work with oh, in Woodland. And it was the day I had to shave it off. It was just long enough to get the beat over, but not long enough to put like a rubber band around it to hold it in place. I'm not sure I got enough going on there. So I just missed my goal. But I never would do that. All right. Next up on the list is tickets to Lollapalooza. What is that? Some kind of lollipop? Well, no. No. It's a... Here, let me just read this. Okay. Planning on going this year, uh, you enjoy standing in mud for hours and paying $15 for a beer and then waiting two hours in an excruciating bathroom line. Come on, just admit it. You don't want to be there. Uh, you want to be home, listening to your music on a record player, well, or D DVD or CD player. You got a record or player. Or your phone, uh, in the comfortable, in comfortable pants, and a bathroom with a toilet that flushes. Yeah, it's about time. Yeah. All right, this is interesting. I'm not sure. What about being over 50 and having more than two social media accounts. Uh, you have Twitter. I have Twitter. You have I Facebook. very rarely use it. And I have Instagram that I use just to follow my daughter oh. a little bit. I don't really post too much on Instagram. Keeping a social media presence is a lot of responsibility. I have three that I manage. Trico, Men Are So Smart, and Blue. Ooh. And not so many people over 50 have the wherewithal to juggle more than a few. Thank you. Thank you again. Please sit down. Uh, if you're on Facebook and Instagram already, that's plenty. You probably don't also need to have a Twitter handle. And don't even think about LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+, Snapchat, Tumblr, etc., etc. You're not impressing anybody by spreading yourself out online so thin. Uh, this next one, I love this one. It's a wristwatch that looks like it was the prize at the bottom of a cereal box. So... That would be, yeah, not, this one's pretty classic right here. This is, this is a nice little Seiko. Walmart, nine ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, if you're wearing like a bright green or an orange watch, uh, that might be a sign. Yeah. Uh, we're not suggesting that you spend a fortune on a watch. We're just saying at this point in your life, you deserve a watch like your dad used to wear. A high-end timepiece with a clean, modern design. Not a watch whose band falls apart every time you smoke so much as flex, flex your wrist. I'm surprised mine hasn't come apart doing this right now. <laughs> Honest to God. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I love a, a good watch. But my dad used to say something when I was a kid growing up. He'd say, you know what? A $30 watch tells the same correct time as a $300 watch. And a broken watch is still right twice a day. And it's not the arrow. It's the Indian. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything, Ron? I don't know. I'm not sure either. <laughs> jeans that don't quite fit. Uh oh. Guilty. You gotta buy start buying dad jeans. I gotta start buying 42 instead of 40 now. <laughs> Whether you're waiting to lose just a few more pounds so you can squeeze into them, or you like the way the jeans uh, make you look, these pants are unbecoming on a man of your age. If you're over 50, you're embarrassing everyone, especially with those 50 year old thighs. <laughs> and that ain't no joke. Um, 
let's see. This next one. Oh, God. I hate these things. Crocs. Oh, yeah. Oh, Who they're, has those? They're the worst. They're First of all, they're ugly. They cannot possibly be comfortable. Uh, so this goes on to say it's not that they're just the ugliest shoes that humankind has ever created or that they give your feet a polka dot tan. It's that Crocs are hurting your feet, according to podiatrists. Yeah. The open back and loose strap can wreak havoc on your heel and shank. Uh, and you know the, the what will start to break down after you're 50, so don't take care of them. That's your feet. Yeah. You know what? Have you ever had plantar fasciitis? I think I have when I was younger, but I haven't had anything like that lately. It's, oh, it's so painful. And the only way you can get around it is by wearing kind of expensive shoes with good arch support. Yeah. Um, Crocs, Especially if you're on your feet all day. Crocs are neither of those. Okay. Yeah. All right. Glory days. Bruce Springsteen. Next up, things you should not own if you are over 50 high school trophies. You know, who cares that you were a soccer champ in high school or that you led your debate team to victory with your thoughtful analysis of 80s era Cold War relations? Literally nobody. Yeah. Putting those trophies on display where any visitor can easily see them is the dictionary definition of self-indulgent. Please, people. It was so long ago. What is it? 40 years for me? Yeah, 40. Yeah. 41 years out of high school. You know what I do have, though? I have a baseball from when I was 12 years old. Wow. I pitched a no-hitter. No way. Yeah, and it's signed by the team. Uh, I have that. I dig it. I like it. I'm. One day my kids will find it and go, huh? Yep. Ch- check it, Buster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have it. It's, de- it's destined for Buster. All right, let's do a couple more. Oh my God! Get out of here. This one, a go fedora. Ahead. All right, fedora. <laughs> it's the laziest fashion accessory ever. The thing young guys turn to because they think it makes them look old school and debonair, like somebody who says. My lady. My lady. Uh, a lot. And knows how to swing, dance, and maybe his friends with Justin Timberlake. He wears okay. one. He can pull it yeah, off. Yeah, he gets away with it. He can pull it off. He's awesome, right. Justin he's, Timberlake. He's not 50, though. No, no. he's about 40. Uh, nobody buys it when a young guy wears it, and they're definitely not buying it when an old guy does. And, you know, if you're, cover, if you're wearing it to cover your bald head... Yeah, people figure that out pretty At quick. At some point, somebody's going <laughs> to yeah. see it. Okay? The hat's going to blow off. There's no chin strap. All right, Ronnie, all. let's wrap up with this one right here. Okay. If you're over 50, there are two things that you should not have, and I'm going to make this very clear right now. Number one, a man bun. No. You know why? Come on. Have you seen your reflection in the mirror? Do you not have a mirror by the front door? If you really want to... Do your make your look look younger. Take a look at some other options, and one of those is not a ponytail. Right. Okay. No man bun, no ponytail over fifty. Yeah. If you've got your hair in a ponytail and you're over fifty, trust me, you have not left the seventies era. Honestly, I'm going to put the cut off at twenty five. Okay, I'm with you on that. Yes. If you're over twenty five and you have I'm sorry, I call him a douche knot okay. instead of a man bun. If you've got a douche knot or a ponytail, you are you have no zero fashion sense. There are people that can, if you are maybe very artistic, uh, eclectic like that, you might be able to pull it off and people will go, they'll talk about it. Oh, yeah. You oh, see the oh, yeah. Oh, but he's, he's an oh, artist. Yeah, well, okay. yeah. You might be able to get away with it. You kind of can pull it off. But if you have to have a real job, a man bun ain't going to cut it, and neither is a ponytail. Here's a good school of the rule of thought right here, right here, okay? If the last time you got your hair cut, Nixon was president, <laughs> you need to make a change. All right? That'll do it for our list of things you should not own over the age of 50. Hope you enjoyed. We got a few laughs out of that for sure. And we'd enjoy your comments below. We always welcome those and we always respond. Maybe you have a few items of your own you'd like to add to the list. Yeah. Yeah. Ponytail is one of my pet peeves. It really is.
right. Uh, I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. And we will see you on our very next Men Are So Smart. Look forward to it.